two people born two different years in Germany, one in Frankfurt, one in Ingolstadt in Germany. It's amazing how much Germany pumped so much evil at that time in history. And I want you to understand that uh, at that time, there was a Jewish man called Amchel Moses Bauer. Mr. Bauer was so humiliated by the German non-Jews. Jews at that time were not, even or, were not even allowed to walk freely with every other person. They, whenever a Gentile came, they had to clear the road to allow him to go off first. And then he was so humiliated that he promised that when the day comes, he will become so wealthy that they will serve him. And it's interesting because Amschel Bauer opened in 1743 a coin shop for rare coins in Frankfurt, Germany. And right above his store, he put a big shield of the Roman eagle, and it was a red shield. And it was known to be the Red Shield Firm. Rothschild in German, the Rothschild. That's how they began, Mr. Amschel Moses Bauer. Of course, he died, but not before that, his son, Meyer Amschel Bauer, was able to study, to be excellent, to be super in, 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 in his intelligence. You know, Jewish people in those days were so smart. They had to be because they were a minority. They were afraid that they would be stepped on by all the others. In order to survive, they had to show excellence. And he studied, and he was an excellent person. And he went up in the ladder so much so that some of the people that he were hiring him actually introduced him to the king of Germany of that time and to the kings of Europe of that time. And he befriended them. And he started working with them to create a bank banking system, world banking system, and he learned the art of making money and mostly loaning money to people. But then he realized that loaning money to the individual is not making much money. Actually loaning money to governments, to leaders, that's the big money. And that's how he started. And when he had acquired enough money, he went back to Frankfurt and he bought his father's shop and he called himself from now on Mr. Meyer Rothschild. And that's how the Rothschild family was born. And bear in mind, they had no rel relations to their Jewish roots. They never counted themselves Jews at that time. Mr. Meyer was so enlightened that he never counted himself a Jew. He counted himself illuminated. He counted himself as a servant of Satan to bring about world domination and one world government. He could care less if the Jews are going to die because of it or not. He could care less what the consequences on it. That's why Jesus said, by the way, in Revelation chapter 3, it says, be aware of those who say that they are Jews, but they are actually not. They are the synagogue of Satan, the Bible says. And so you need to understand that we have Meyer Rothschild determined to take over the world with his wealth. By the way, he gave birth, not him, his wife, to five sons, and he placed every son in a different city in Europe. One went to Vienna, one went to London, one went to Naples, and of course, one uh, was in Paris, and he himself stayed in Frankfurt. And the interesting thing about it is that those sons even were better than their father in making money. And I'll teach you how. But before that, I want you to know that before he died, he told, he made sure that his, his um, plan will be carried out by someone who is very sophisticated. At the time, in February 6, 1748, Mr. Adam Weishaupt was born in Ingolstadt, Bavaria. Influenced by the French philosopher Voltaire, he actually started looking into the occult. And he said, in 1776, he founded the first Illuminati order. Up until now, all the Illuminati were never calling themselves Illuminati. They were just illuminated, they were just enlightened, but they never used the word Illuminati. In 1776, on May 1st, the first time an organization calls himself officially Illuminati and open his first lodge. And Mr. Meyer Rothschild is giving him the money and is sitting with him and plotting how his money and this man's teaching are going somehow to take over the whole world. Mr. 
uh, Hauptstadt was actually a Jesuit priest who was actually <laughs> leaving his faith in God and ready to take over the world because of his influence by the occult. And somehow, at some point, the messenger that carried the secret writings of the Illuminati died along the way and the documents were found and they were published and the whole world were roaring because of the fact that there is a group of people that is now plotting to take over the world. Now, I'm, now Meyer, Rothschild, and Hauptstadt actually knew that they cannot really write who they are. They wanted to disguise as if it's a Jewish plot to take over the world and they wrote it in a way that whoever finds it will actually accuse the Jews for that. And that is exactly what happened. Jewish people were accused all around Western and Eastern Europe and thousands of them died in attacks. Now, before he died, Mr. Rothschild told his son three things. One, whenever you have a job, an important position in our, in our family's business, only you should be there. Don't let any foreigner take that position. If your daughter is marrying someone else, he cannot be in that position. Only direct bloodline. Second, he told them, marry second degree cousins. Don't intermarry with others. We need to keep the wealth within our own bloodline. Third, he said, never give any account to anyone about what you have and how much you have. Up until today, there is no document that specifies how much the Rothschild family really owns. They all keep his uh, commandments very well. And so, Mr. Uh, Meyer Rothschild died, and now his sons are all over Europe. There's only one problem. They're all over France, all over Germany, all over England, all over Belgium, all over. The only the Russians are not allowing them a footstep in their territory. That's why the Rothschilds with the Illuminati, of course the Illuminati right now, are now plotting to kick this czar of Russia out. How? You just have to train some people with the new theory called what? Marxism. It's called what? Communism. And then you send them in and a revolution takes place and the czar is out. And now we control that part also. You must understand the Illuminati is controlling the world in a way that, sh th th that is not really showing any allegiance, any, any, uh, uh, um, um, they're not um, somehow loyal to a particular thing. For them, it's a double talk. For them, every force tends to have an opposite counterforce. The conflict between the two results in a new situation. You see, every thesis must have a antithesis and that bring the synthesis you understand that and then of course that's how the synthesis is helping them the insertion you have to understand this is a double talk and a double think that's how they do they feed the the the, the world of of um wealth and they feed the communists and at the same time they can oppress these and oppress those and make sure there are wars and they give money to this side of the war they gave money to the french revolution they gave money to the uh, war the civil war in america they gave money to both sides in world war one they gave money to both sides on world war two they gave money to both sides in the um cold war they always supported two sides because it served their interest. It is the thesis and the antithesis, and they wanted the synthesis. And remember that. And so, we're coming to the point where Rothschild is very strong. His son is Nathan Rothschild. He's the one who is placed in England. Have you ever heard the name Waterloo? Have you ever the, heard the name ABBA, the, 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 the band, the Swedish band? Have you ever heard the song Waterloo? Never mind. Anyway, Waterloo is a, is a, a place. Today is in Belgium. At that time, it was in the hands of the Netherlands. And there was a big battle there between Napoleon and Britain and Germany. That was, of course, on June 15, 1815. And you have to understand that the Duke of Wellington, on behalf of the, of the British, and the King of Prussia were against Napoleon. That the whole world was holding his breath. Who's going to win? 
The stock market of London was holding its breath. They all knew if Napoleon wins, the British stock market is going to collapse. But if Britain will win, the stocks will soar. So what happened is, Mr. Nathan Rothschild had his secret courier, secret envoy in the battlefield to observe what's going on. On 18th of June, just three days into the battle, he came all the way to London and he reported to Nathan that Napoleon is being defeated. Nathan is sitting in his room and he says, I cannot report that. I must use this information to create this information to benefit from both. So he went to the Department of War and said, my person says that Napoleon is actually winning. He actually went to the stock market and started selling all of his stocks. So all the traders thought, wow, if Nathan Rothschild, that wealthy man, he's selling all of his stocks, we're losing the battle. Everybody sell started selling all their stocks. The stocks plunged a penny for the dollar. And just 10 minutes before the messenger, the real messenger of the fight came to report their victory, Nathan Rothschild bought all the stocks. And immediately he was the wealthiest man in England and he bought the bank of England of that time. His brothers and his descendants now moving to New York and they bought the Central Bank of America and the Federal Reserve today is not the Federal Reserve which you think is a Central Bank of America. It is a privately owned bank by the Rothschild family. And you probably don't even know that.